Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Sudanese forces attack protesters on anniversary of 2019 Khartoum massacre. Death toll in Gaza continues to rise in third day of Israeli bombing. Thai court grants bail to three activists detained under royal defamation laws. Afghan government reports 255 civilian deaths during month of Ramadan. In our first story, we go to Sudan, where two protesters were killed by security forces on May 11th. Hundreds of people had gathered in the capital of Khartoum to demand justice for the victims of the violent attack on a protest in 2019. Thousands of people had held a sit-in demonstration outside the army headquarters as part of the Sudanese revolution then. Over 128 people were killed after the armed forces led by the paramilitary rapid support forces stormed the site. The attack left around 700 people injured and there were over 70 reported cases of rape. Later in 2019, the Sudanese government established an independent committee to investigate the violence. However, the body has repeatedly failed to present its findings on the incident. Protesters gathered in the original site of the 2019 sit-in in central Khartoum on May 11th, despite attempts by the army to block the site. Families of the victims presented the protests on Tuesday accused General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo for the attack on the Khartoum sit-in. He was the leader of the Rapid Support Forces in 2019 and is now the deputy of Sudan's Sovereignty Council. As the protests continued into the evening, security forces began to close, close off roads at the sit-in site. Shortly after, they began firing live ammunition and tear gas to disperse the protests. The Central Committee of Sudan's doctors estimated that around 28 people were injured. Meanwhile, demonstrations were also held by resistance committees in different parts of the country, including Nyala and Kasala. Demonstrations broke out again on Tuesday night following the deaths of the two protesters from gunshot wounds. People laid down bricks to block roads and burn tires in several places in Khartoum. In our next story, 56 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli airstrikes on Gaza Strip as of 5 p.m. local time on May 12th. As the attacks continued for the third day, at least 355 Palestinians have been injured. Israeli airstrikes had targeted several neighborhoods and residential buildings. Palestinian group Hamas also confirmed that its Gaza city commander Basim Issa had been killed. Meanwhile, solidarity protests have continued across the occupied Palestinian territories. The Israeli government has restricted redirected border police battalions to suppress these protests. As of Wednesday morning, Israeli forces have arrested 270 people on accusations of rioting and disturbances. At least 40 people were detained overnight in the West Bank. A state of emergency and a nighttime curfew has also been imposed in the city of Lod. Here is a video feature on the current situation in the occupied territories. انت شايف ضرب البوش طابق التالت واطلع شهداء منه هاي لسه بقول في كمان شهداء وهذا ناس 80 زي ما انت شايف 63 شقه في قلبه حسب الله ونعم الوكيل عليك يا نتنياهو Thank <laughs> you.
الشيخ جراح اولا وللقدس والتهويدات والانتهاكات اللي بتسويها لاسرائيل في ساحات القدس وبدنس وبقدسنا واقصانا شو رسالتك للمواطنة الفلسطينية لاهل القدس؟ انضموا لنا واطلعوا، غزة بتستنى فينا والقدس بتستنى فينا والشيخ جراح فينا شو رسالتك للعالم؟ لأهلنا فلسطينان هاي الأرض بس إلنا In our next story, we go to Thailand where three activists have been granted bail following weeks of protests. The criminal court in Bangkok granted bail to Parit Chivarak and Chiamon Kevin Bumpan on May 11th. Chivarak was in detention for 92 days and his bail applications were rejected around 10 times. He was on hunger strike for nearly two months and had to be hospitalized earlier this month. A regional appeals court has also granted conditional bail to another activist who has been in detention since March 17th after he was arrested just days after a serious traffic incident. He will now be required to wear an electronic monitoring bracelet. All three activists were detained under Thailand's widely condemned royal defamation laws. They are also facing charges relating to cyber crimes and seditions. Sustained protests by pro-democracy activists have also led to the release of three other activists over the weekend. However, their bail is conditional on them participating in active, not participating in activities considered a disruption to society. Thailand has also been witnessing the resurgence of protests demanding democratic reforms in the government. Protesters have denounced the military-supported government and the powers given to the monarchy. Between July 2020 and March 2021, at least 581 people were accused in 268 cases related to anti-government protests. At least 83 people have been charged under the royal defamation laws. Each penalty under the law can carry a prison sentence of anywhere between 3 to 15 years. For our final story, we go to Afghanistan where the Interior Ministry has reported 255 civilian killings since April 13th. The ministry stated that the Taliban were responsible for 200 blasts and 15 suicide bombings since the start of Ramadan. Around 500 civilians have also been injured. Afghanistan has been witnessing a steady escalation of violent attacks over the past few weeks. At least 85 people have been killed following a bomb, car bomb attack outside Said al Shuhada school in Kabul on May 8th. The bomb exploded in the Dashte Barchi neighborhood, which is home to members of the minority ethnic Hazara community. Two other bombs detonated shortly after the total number of injuries is around 147. A majority of the victims were schoolgirls between the ages of 11 and 15 years. The Taliban is denied responsibility for the attack. As the attacks continue, the UNOCHA has noted that the situation is especially deteriorated in southern provinces, including Kandhar and Helmand. As of May 9th, 97,129 people have been displaced by the conflict in the country. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Oh, 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 oh,